Hello and welcome back to the Why Did I Get Married series. We have talked about the previous relationships of Diane and uh, Terry, Patricia, and Gavin. We did Sheila and Mike and then Mike and Troy. This is actually Sheila, Mike, and Troy. We're talking about the dichotomy of the three. You can't really talk about one without the other, but this is particularly a focal point or, or uh, analysis. So as we pick up on this part, it's more so a dissection. I kind of went through a little bit of a dissection in the last one on Sheila and Troy because in order to understand a bit of the reason why Sheila acted a certain way with Troy you had to talk about her past with Mike so what is it that is the common denominator between the three of these people Sheila Sheila was married to Mike Sheila is married to Troy common sense now we have to look at the fact of the matter that it's the relationship that Sheila had with Mike and then the relationship that she gained from being with Troy that created the dichotomy of the animosity between Troy and Mike. Okay? So, if you look at the beginnings of the story, which only comes to understanding in the second film, Sheila first met Mike when they were in high school. Now, Sheila, she's very mild-tempered. Sheila doesn't look like she would want to get into much of an issue with anybody. But at the same time, notice that when Sheila first met Troy, she was very aggressive in the very first conversation. Like she was putting him off. Remember how he was just trying to tell her, oh, you're not getting up there tonight. And she said, I am from such and such. I know how to drive around, blah, 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 blah. And she had attitude. So it's not to say that she doesn't have attitude at all. She just chooses to remain peaceable. Why? She's the Christian woman. Remember this. How do we know this? She spent the entire drive listening to gospel music. And praying to the Lord to save her marriage. Now, when it came down to it, Sheila, she kind of was attracted to Mike for his dangerous side. She didn't have the wisdom to gain that in high school, his dangerous side will become dangerous to her. What ended up happening is when she got attached to Mike and married Mike, she then found out how much of a controlling, narcissistic person that Mike was. From my understanding it, of everything, he was the entrepreneur. He was the one that made the money. 
So she was the kept wife. But you could tell that she was unhappy because of her weight. A lot of people do not put on weight unless they're carrying things in which they don't need to carry. So instead of deal with their problems, they eat them. How do I know? My mother was over 350 pounds. So, and she was dealing with certain type of emotional things. When she started to cleanse, started to detoxify her life, started to remove the things in her life that were no longer serving her for a season, she dropped down really skinny. Skinniest I've ever seen her. But when she began to reintroduce those things back into her life, she blew back up. Because I'd seen my mother fluctuate in weight. Mike was very toxic to Sheila. And if you watch Sheila's mannerism, especially during the point in time when she was still married to Mike, it almost seemed as if she was taking and making every attempt that she could think of to try to maintain their relationship. This is the thing. Let's just talk about narcissists for a minute. A narcissist is never going to be happy. You could do everything in your power to make a narcissist happy. They're always going to find something wrong. I remember I used to know a woman who... She studied me for a period of time. We were roommates for a period of time. She studied me. And she would do anything in her power to make my skin crawl. Did not matter if I cleaned the space up. Didn't matter if I did everything to make sure that all things were in order. Didn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. Anything I did was going to offend her because she was a narcissist. I literally heard her say one time, well, that doesn't matter. After I told her I did, I did everything that was she asked. She's like, well, that doesn't matter. I made the point of saying that, that when you are in a relationship with a narcissist, Nothing you do is ever going to make them happy, no matter how hard you try. Now, the bigger question is, why would Sheila choose to remain in a relationship with a narcissist? What do narcissists do? Narcissists break you down over time. Narcissistic behavior is the first sign of an abuser. Because nine times out of ten, they're going to lure you in with charm. They're going to show you probably some sort of a sign. You can look at something that may appear to be valiant about them. Maybe they're a little bit of a bad boy. Maybe they are... A strong will. Maybe they have uh, this protective um, element about them. These are all things that would be assumed to be attractive to you, right? But when it comes down to it, um, it's not an actual attractive aspect of a person, okay? It is a sign that there's a problem here. I remember being a teenager and the guy that I was involved with, we used to have this thing where we would hit each other. And we were teenagers. 
I'm talking about 70, 80 years old. Now, common sense would tell you, you're not supposed to hit a guy. Common sense would tell you that if the guy's hitting you back. <laughs> but, oh, we playing. We just roughhousing. We just... Da, 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 da. What do you think that that would do in the long term? Over time, that will become more painful over time because you do it already. If the guy actually hit you, would you take that into an issue? I remember a situation that had occurred where he was angry about something. I had asked him a question, very simple question in relation to something that he'd been dealing with. He turned around and he grabbed me. But all intents and purposes, the scenario could have been more damaging. Why? Because of the fact that when he grabbed me, I had the oven open and it was hot. So, you have to look at warning signs. That super macho masculinity could actually be dangerous. How did we find out that it was dangerous? We did not find out until the second film that... Sheila had been abused by Mike. She said, I remember sitting on that floor trying to scrub up the blood out of that yellow towel. Because I always remember that yellow towel. Because that yellow towel, I couldn't get that blood stain out no matter how hard I scrubbed it. So at some point, his masculinity became toxic. The very thing that attracted her, more than likely his mas macho masculinity, blah, 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 now became the thing in which he used to control her. And because he was the entrepreneur, guaranteed, he was the one making the money and she was the one staying in the house. She had no options. Where does this come from? When you have a person that goes through childhood trauma, they become either the trauma that they went through or they become the opposite. I believe that when Sheila became attracted to Mike, it was because something was going on in her household that made Mike look like a savior to her in that time frame. One of her parents was probably loud, boisterous, and talked to her a very specific way. So when she saw the same behavior in Mike, she was used to it. So this is why when she became attached to Troy and he was nothing like she was used to, even from her childhood trauma, she didn't know how to deal with that. So she started seeking. Wait, I'm waiting for the point in time when the other shoe going to drop. It's going to drop. It got to drop. I mean, it has to, doesn't it? At some point, he's going to start acting like Mike did, right? The outburst that Troy had um, when he was frustrated with her while they were on vacation. The outburst he had when he was frustrated with the fact that he couldn't get a job after moving back to uh, the state that they were from or she was from. So, 
she saw that element. You always look for it. When you have had relationships that trigger you, you're looking for the trigger in everybody. You're waiting for it. Because at some point, that trigger comes out of a person. You're like, okay, I'm waiting. Some way, somebody going to have this trigger. I'm going to wait for that trigger to show up. Then I can say, oh, yeah, you were always like that after all. No, I wasn't. They just had a moment. It would be out of their character to act like whoever that other person was. But see, when the other person, Mike, would act kind, he only did it because he wanted something. When Troy acted kind, that was his personality. When Mike was abusive, that was his day-to-day. -day. Yelling, manipulating, acting like a narcissist. If Troy was angry, that was because he had a moment. He's human. He's had a moment. You can't compare two people that you were with with each other. The one thing that they always say, do not compare your previous person with the person you were in the past, with in the past. Because more than likely, they are nothing alike. And when you read a person through the lens of your previous relationship, that relationship is going to be doomed. Because you can't see them for who they are. And because of the fact that, again, I say, Sheila had no time to process herself before she married Troy. He was around from the point of her and Mike separating all the way up to the point in which um, they got together and got married. They had no break. So she never got to really process herself and deal with herself and deal with her attractions and so on and so forth. Troy, on the other hand, Troy was there for her. Now, some people, they have a type of personality. They don't know how to operate without help. Now, Remember, Troy brought up a good point. He said something about, actually, no, it wasn't Troy. It was uh, Sheila. Sheila brought up the point when they were at the diner. Um, oh, I don't want to get caught up in that hero syndrome. And he's like, what's hero syndrome? That hero syndrome, uh, my friend all, Patricia always talk about hero syndrome, where they become a savior and then you fall in love with them. What if the hero syndrome that she had fallen for was what caused her to run into Mike's arms in the first place? Until she realized who he actually was and she was already trapped. So the reason that she brought it up was because she was actually using it as a deflector. I'm not going to do what I did before. And then Troy explains, well, what if you're the hero syndrome that I'm dealing with? And she never thought about it like that. And he began to express a different viewpoint to her from a positive perspective. So she began to see herself in a more positive light because of Troy. Mm -hmm. The last conversation you hear in the beginning, I mean, at the ending of the first movie is when she was sitting there talking with the girls and she said, 
He loves me. He gets up with me every day. He runs with me. He speaks positive to me. He does all of the right things. And you hear her cry out about the fact that that's what she was desiring. That that's the exact man in which she prayed for. So as we pick up in the second film, when Troy and Mike come into contact with each other, there's an automatic macho beef between the two of them. Because you notice the little spurs that they be throwing. And Mike was like, I noticed that you and you, you, you and Sheila had a kid, right? He was like, well, I guess your swimmers wasn't working because that didn't transpire. Between you two, did it? And uh, then they were at the dinner table, not the dinner, the card table. And Mike made that little comment at the table. The male element. And this is true for females too. Because I remember I was listening to the song uh, with Mary J. Blige and Beyonce. It said, no woman wants to hear, walk into a room and hear a woman knowing information about her man. No man wants to be in a scenario that another man knows information about him. Especially information that can one up him. Mike knowing that Troy didn't have no job was detrimental to that masculine element between two guys. Because now Mike, especially with his narcissistic personality, had something that he could use against him. That's what Mike, what uh, Troy was upset about. When he finally sat down and talked to Sheila in their bedroom later that night. It wasn't so much about the job. It was about the fact that that male code was destroyed. Plus, he couldn't keep uh, throwing spurs at Mike. If Mike... Had that one up on him. You understand what I'm saying? He couldn't keep doing that. So it took a level of power. Out of. Troy's hand. Only for the power to have been taken out of Troy's hand by Sheila. When you are married, you don't help the opposing force, okay? Be very careful of who you allow to have information. Sheila talked too much. I remember a situation years ago when I was in my previous relationship. And it always, it bothers me up until this point. Um, it was a piece of information that the person that I was with had given me in confidence. And I told my best friend. One day, I'm sitting there with my best friend and him. And I slip out and I say, I already told her what he told me in confidence. He never told me another thing after that. And he admitted not too long afterward that he didn't trust me anymore. I 
I heard my mother say years ago that the one thing that you never want to lose from a man is respect. When a man loses respect for you, you're in trouble. Sheila talked too much and was not understanding the weight of her words. She carelessly spoke about things that she should have thought about before she said. Why am I focusing on this? A lot of you are called to high profile and or influential relationships. If you're called to high profile influential relationships, and I'm talking about, you could just be a community leader's wife, a pastor's wife, um, somebody within the community that has influence his wife. Let's take a moment and look at something. I believe his name was Demar Hamlin. Hamlin? Hamilton? The football player. He has a charity that since his injury gained over $8 million. Now let's think about community effect. Let's say you get involved with somebody that has just a community.